Looking today at the rather grubby business of gut festivals. Oh, dear. Does it strike you as a good idea to encourage gut festivals? Oh, no. No, 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 no we don't. No, no. What sort of problems can arise at gut festivals? Drug taking? Anything else? Well, they all look too dirty to me. Obviously, to stop this kind of trouble at a gut festival, it'd be quite a good idea to impose a gut limit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, would it be a limit on size or a limit on concept oh, of I gut? Think size. Size, size yeah. of gut. Yes. And uh, what size of gut would you allow maximum at a gut festival? I don't know. Say two inches. Take the top off. Oh, no. Take the top off? Mm. It'd be spewing out all over the place, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah. What length of gut would you impose? Three inches, eh? Flat milk. Problems with flat milk. How do you feel? Well, I'd ask you much point than that. What's wrong with flat milk, in your opinion? It's not doing the job it's supposed to. It's like a, a blind plumber with a big hammer who goes around smashing all your pipes. On? However much you pay, it's not doing the job properly. No, and I don't think that should be interfered with you, unless you're one of these people, once they're slim, then you're going to skim them. But flat milk, that's... That's just ridiculous, isn't it? Rubbish, yeah. Yes. How can you tell that the milk is flat? Well, you know right away. Not just by looking at it? Yeah. What's the nutritional value of flat milk? Oh, couldn't be very much. Less than five? Yeah. How can we stop milk's flatness? You can't pump it up again. You can't pump it up again? No. Not even if you had an extremely large uh, compressor? I shouldn't think so, no. So you'd prefer your milk bumpy rather than flat? Yeah. Right, sir. We're looking today at white face trouble. It does cause some difficulty, doesn't it? Yes, it does. What happens if you get a lot of white faced people with faces considerably wider than their shoulders overlapping and drooping down and so on in one place? I think they get aggressive. What would happen there? They might have a collision all over, wouldn't they? What, banging at the head level? Yes. Where would be the worst place for a large number of white faced people to conglomerate? You just have to a cul de sac, you know, for. Facing which way? The blank end or the. The blank end. And if you were in a window, say, overlooking it medieval style, what, what, what would you see? Well, I get my panic a bit, you know. Panic turmoil? Yes, that's right. What about the ones at the front who are being crushed by the white faces coming up behind them? I think I, I just feel sad for them, really. Would you offer up a prayer? I promise that they are father. What about white faced children taking exams? What problems could happen there? Yes, that could be copying, you know, it's cheating, really. If they could look over the shoulder, you see. Well, with the width of their face? Yes. What about a white-faced child on a bicycle? Well, uh, the wind would blow them maybe onto the road. Catch the face if it was too, too wide, but like an umbrella. What is a really bad width for a face? <laughs> I'd say it any more than three foot wide to be properly dangerous. And the ideal width for a face? I'd say two. Two? Two feet. looking today at spherical cattle, making them round. Do you agree with that? I don't agree with that. How would a spherical cow get around its pen? Well, I should think you'd have to put some sort of uh, netting round it to guide it. So what's that, could just get a grip on the net? That's right. You couldn't leave it in the field or anything like that. Well, imagine if it was in a pen and the water was at the other end of the pen and it was thirsty. How, how would it manage? Well, can they smell it? Well, I suppose they'd have a nose on the on the circumference. Well, is it? They've got to have some sort of a smell of it. Let's assume they have. Um, they'd roll to it. They'd roll towards it? Yeah. But how would they actually manage to make themselves r- 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 roll? Muscles. There are muscle strength inside them. Would it be better off with a leg? Well, I should think so. It could, grow, it could walk along just like a chicken. Two legs. Unless the legs were opposite sides. And then it, then it would have to go around like a sort of a, well, a, a broken yeah, line. Well it, well, it couldn't go as a, as a ball. If you had a ball and you put two legs to it, one either side with the ball. Right, but if they were sticking out of the side, they'd be like sort of long, thin ears or something, and it would just ah, bounce off the wall. Yeah, well, then you're getting like something from outer space. If you gave it two legs, would you have them side by side or would you have them on opposite ends of the ball? Side by side. How far apart? Two or three foot. And what about if it was a milk cow? It was a milk cow? Perhaps they might do a square one. And if you saw a spherical cow and you had a gun about you, would you shoot it? Yeah. A lot of mistreatment about one person to another, isn't there? Yeah. What do you think about hinge abuse? Pardon? Hinge abuse. Oh, uh, no, I think it's disgusting. Very bad. Gets really bad when dogs suffer from hinge abuse, doesn't it? That's dreadful. No, it's awful, awful. But it keeps going through these people's heads as they casually slip well, an extra hinge into a dog. just not only human beings, are we? Probably the worst place for a dog to get an extra hinge. Bad. On his backside, on his rump. If you try to pick up a, a dog with a hinge halfway along his body, what so might happen? Collapse, wouldn't it? Fold over. 
Fold in half? Well, I would think so. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's other organs, isn't yeah. it? Where would you least like to have a hinge on yourself? Nowhere. How many hinges do you think a human being could tolerate before it became effectively useless? Well, I would say ten, I should think. And if a human being had more than ten hinges, they'd simply... I'd blow my brains out. How do you feel about people tying knots in their face? Well, if I think people tie knots in their faces, there must be something wrong with their brains. I mean, maybe young people, you Man, know, their, their you skin can, is a bit looser, more supple. You can stretch your skin, can you? I mean, exactly. It's proven, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Like, if you tried it today and keep pulling at it, maybe next weekend you'd be able to tie a knot in it. You'd pull your cheeks out and, and tie it right across in front of your nose. Oh, yeah, right. You could do that, couldn't you? Almost <laughs> like the front of a balaclava stretch or something. Stretch your ears and tie them across your eyes, couldn't you, really? Why are they doing it? Why are they tying knots in their well, faces? Well, nothing to do with getting a job, is it? A lot of them haven't got nothing to say, have they? Do you think it's a lack of words which uh, causes people to tie knots lack in their education. face? Lack of education. Lack of political thinking. So you would say that if you don't educate people, they're going to end up tying knots in their faces? I would reckon so. So if a student has one knot in their face, somebody who's studying for a degree, what about somebody who's just failed their O-levels? How many knots do you think they don't, don't they? Well, I suppose you're looking at a half a dozen, really, aren't you? What would be the worst kind of knot to tie in a face? Well, weaver's knot, because you couldn't undo it again. So you should do something that you can undo? I'd do an, a straightforward knot or a bow knot. Is it worse if you tie it in your own face or someone else's? Their own face. Even though if they were doing it on someone else, they, they might not know when to stop and they might be putting pain on that other person. Well, it depends if the other person wanted it done. But maybe they'd get to a point if they were tying it in their mouth where they couldn't actually say the word stop. Are oh, you talking about the person who's getting the nut put in? Yeah. And maybe they thought it was a good idea to start off with and then they'd arrived at a point where they thought no. Well, that's right. That's, that's, uh... Would you say it's still better to tie a knot in someone else's? Well, I would say so. As I said, if you put a difficult knot in your face and it's got very painful and you couldn't undo it, I mean, you're, you're the one who's going to suffer the pain. Imagine if you woke up with a knot in your face tomorrow morning. I feel rotten. Would you try and do something about it? I would take myself to the nearest doctor. It will say, untie this knot, please. Well, if you, if you can't undo it, cut it out or something. People tying knots in their faces, what do you think? Well, obviously I'd say that they're totally disillusioned with society as they see it. And this is their method of showing it. But I do think that after a couple of years, they will regret having mutilated themselves. Do you think the more knots, the worse? Well, the bigger the number obviously displays a deeper resentment against society, I think. Whereabouts do you think is the worst part of your face to have a knot? I would say the lips. Why would that be? Yeah. Well, um, the lips are, are so expressive of people. And even in, um, we say, a romance situation. How would it affect a romantic situation to have a knot in your lips? A very adverse effect. Is it worse when people do it to each other or to themselves? Well, if they do it to each other, I wonder if there's some form of... Um, Pink sex involved. Pecking orders. What do you think of pecking orders? Well, I think it's a natural reaction. Pecking orders, a natural reaction? Yeah. Any benefits accrue from pecking orders? Sense of order. More, um, more civilised, I think. Any disgrace at all in pecking orders? No. So if you were given some orders, you'd peck them cheerily and without shame? Yeah. What would you hope to gain from pecking orders with your own beak? Peace of mind. Do you agree with putting it away? Yes. Without looking like you're going to put it away and then actually not putting it away? I don't go along with that. Deceiving. What about uh, putting it away and then bringing it out again? Straight away? Well, it's a bad thing. What about putting it away, bringing it out again, and then looking like you're going to put it back and then throwing it up a tree? I'd be against them. What about people who put it away, make a movement as if they're going to bring it out again, then actually go off and buy a new one, leave it out? I suppose it is immoral. How many times would you like to see it put away per day? Three at the most.